Welcome to the second in the series of MEMS Micromachine Overviews presented by the Southwest Center for Microsystems Education. This presentation is a brief overview of the bulk micromachining process used to fabricate micro-sized devices. As a reminder, MEMS means Microelectromechanical Systems. Two other presentations discuss surface and LIGA micromachining. These three processes enable the fabrication of micro-sized components such as gears and gear trains, cantilevers, probes, needles, accelerometers, and micro-sized rods and springs. Because of the size of the devices fabricated, all three of these processes require clean rooms to reduce contamination during processing. Bulk micromachining is a process that defines structures by selectively removing or etching into a substrate. Bulk micromachining makes structures such as this micro cantilever array possible. These cantilevers were fabricated by removing the bulk of the silicon substrate from underneath the structures. Such cantilever arrays are being developed for applications in chemistry, physics, biochemistry, and several medical applications. Bulk micromachining is a selective subtractive process which usually removes the bulk of a material. A couple of bulk etch products that you may already be familiar with are Mount Rushmore, in which a bulk of a mountain was removed, and ancient Indian cliff dwellings, such as the one shown in the picture of Mesa Verde in Colorado. For cl cliff dwellings, the side of a cliff was removed and sculptured to create homes or dwellings. Bulk micromachining is a process in which monocrystalline silicon wafers are selectively etched to form three-dimensional MEMS devices. As I mentioned before, this is a subtractive process in which a bulk of the substrate is selectively removed. Bulk micromachining takes advantage of the crystalline structure of the substrate by using anisotropic etch processes. The upper photograph was taken from the back side of a MEMS pressure sensor fabrication wafer. This hole is the pressure reference chamber for a MEMS pressure sensor. The bottom image shows a series of fluidic chambers and channels that have been bulk etched into a substrate. In both of these examples, you can see that the height of these chambers and holes are higher than the devices that we saw in surface micromachining. This illustrates how aspect ratio, which is the ratio of the height to the width, is higher in bulk than in surface. In fact, bulk micromachining can produce aspect ratios as high as 100 to 1, whereas components constructed using surface micromachining have an aspect ratio of 10 to 1 or less. Bulk micromachining involves some elements of surface micromachining and uses many of the same processes. In addition, bulk micromachine structures can be coupled with surface micromachine components such as thin membranes, valves, um, piezo resistors, and cantilevers. Here we see two types of structures. The top images show the electronic sensing circuit of a MEMS pressure sensor on the left and the backside reference chamber on the right. The sensing circuit has been patterned into a metal layer using surface micromachining. The image on the right is the back side of the pressure sensor, which consists of a bulk etch chamber. You can see the sensing elements of the sensing surface at the top of the chamber. The bottom image is a microfluidic membrane valve with a bulk etched inlet and surface micromachined valve plate on top. The proof mass in the center, connected to the substrate via springs, has been bulk etched from within the substrate. To produce a bulk etched component, the process requires a single crystalline substrate on which a thin film of material is deposited. This film acts as an insulator, isolator, or hard mask during the etch process. Eventually, this film may be patterned and etched or completely removed. Depending on the process of material used, various etch profiles can be obtained. The etch process can result in either isotropic or anisotropic structures, depending upon the etchant and the material being etched. The type of substrate and the etchant can control the shape of the final etch. A myriad of wet and dry etching techniques have been developed to achieve almost any desired structural shape. Some typical structures include grooves and slots that aid in assembly, 
nozzles that are used in inkjet print heads, cavities that create open volumes beneath membranes for pumps and sensor applications, and holes and grooves that allow fluids to pass through. Here are some of the components possible using bulk micromachining. The top graphic illustrates a cantilever ray that can be etched out of a substrate. The lower graphic is typical of a three-axis accelerometer used in airbag deployment sensors. The proof mass that moves due to the acceleration is etched from the substrate. MIMS fabrication, also called micromachining, has allowed for the manufacturing of micro-sized devices that can be fabricated on top of substrates, within substrates, or molded and bonded. Bulk micromachining fabricates micro-sized devices within a substrate. Bulk fabricated components are sometimes combined with surface fabricated components to make a finished device. You can download the Supporting MEMS Micromachining Learning Module from the SCME website. Thank you for viewing this presentation produced by the Southwest Center for Microsystems Education.